Hi, everybody. My name's Christy, and so we're gonna wait a few moments um, while folks hop on, which, whoop, I see you're hopping on. Yay! Hi, 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 hi. Hello, hello, hello. I'm not gonna start right away if you're just hopping on now. Hello, uh, because I want to give folks a little bit of time to, to get on here and get themselves settled. Hi, Tiffany. <clears throat> hello, hello. <laughs> so we're just gonna hang out for a few moments. I'm in my home studio. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> Hello, thanks for joining. Oh my gosh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for hopping on, this is awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna be painting live, so I'm just hanging out here for a moment, uh, waiting for people to hop on, give everybody a chance. Hello, joining with her daughter, that's awesome, I love it. Total newbie, that's what I love. Watching from Texas, hello, thank you, thank you. Uh, everyone's just hopping on now, hello from Oakland. Thanks for hopping on. Um, just waiting a few moments before I officially begin and get started. Uh, just want people to have a chance to get in and get settled. So, but my name's Christy and we're gonna be painting together today, so. Hello San from San Bruno. Hey Maida, you made it. Oh, from Pittston. That's like in my backyard. Pennsylvania, yay. Pennsylvania representing. <laughs> from Washington. Guys, thanks so much for hopping on. This is awesome. San Francisco, yes. Connecticut, get your painting stuff. That's right. <laughs> I love it. <clears throat> Hello, Liberty. I love that name. That's an awesome name. Hello from Utah, I love Utah. We spend a lot of time in Utah, can't wait to get back there. In the UK, awesome. <clears throat> all right, so Vermont in the house, Woo All right, so I'm gonna get started. Uh, I'll give another, let's give it another minute. Hello from Paris, wonderful. Thank you for joining. Ready to paint, me and my four-year-old. Awesome, yes. Thank you, thank you, Liberty. Thank you very much. <laughs> if you're just hopping on, my name is Christy Rice and I will be painting with you today. I'm um, so excited to be here. I'm just honored that art.com asked me to do a little bit of a takeover this weekend. Uh, we are just wrapping up, waiting for people to hop on in about 30 seconds. I'm gonna get started officially. I promise you won't have to look at my face the whole time. I'm gonna flip the camera around here soon and you'll be able to see just all things watercolor. So, <clears throat> all right, let's get started, guys. It's about three minutes after five, um, my time, Eastern. So my name is Christy Rice. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, welcome to the new art.com studio. And I am just honored to be here. Art.com studio is a place for us to kind of virtually gather and relax and learn from each other and paint a little. And so that's my jam, that's why I'm here. So thank you, thank you for joining me. Uh, if you guys want to, and I'm gonna put this URL in, I'm gonna kind of pin it into the comment section. But if you do want to check out my artwork on art.com, I'm gonna send you a URL here and I'm sorry my um, screen is going to be wiggling a little bit, a little. So it's art.com slash Christy. And you can check out all of the, the artwork that I have on, oops, somebody put it up for me. Yep, thank you, thank you. Let me see if I can pin this. I'm trying to figure out how to do that. Pin comment, great, okay. So, um, so let me tell you a little bit about me and we'll get to painting, okay? So um, I do a lot of different things. I started a business I'm in, uh, just about 18 years ago called Momental Designs. You can follow me at Momental here on Instagram. Um, we create bespoke 
crazily custom hand-painted stationery. I have eight employees full-time. Um, and it's all about original artwork and we hand paint or finish products. So that's kind of where a lot of my focus ha has been for a long time. In about 2014, I decided I wanted to start writing books. It had al always been a passion of mine. And so I hooked up with a great um, publisher, Schiffer Publishing in Pennsylvania. Thanks guys for hopping on. And uh, that began the start of what is now nine books that I have illustrated and written over the last six years so that has been just mind-boggling and I know you guys know there was a giveaway and I will be uh, the giveaway included all of my watercolor books so um, I will be um, announcing that winner at the end of today's live session so anyway so yeah so I still run momental designs so we're painting every day it's a very artful studio very messy um, and I am writing um, my 10th book is coming out early 2021 and I am in the process of signing some contracts for my 11th plus book. So that's just crazy, right? Um, so other things that I do, uh, I do a lot of editorial work for wedding publications, blogs, magazines, things like that. I do a lot of styling. Um, and uh, I do a lot of education. So what we're doing here today, me sitting down, hey, Katie, thanks for hopping on. Uh, me sitting down and painting with you and talking and teaching, that is one of my biggest passions. So I have a YouTube channel you can check out. I recently hopped onto TikTok. Yep, 42 years old and on TikTok. <laughs> But it's fun. I'm doing some experimental, more experimental stuff on TikTok. And so you can check me out there. Uh, and I'm just, you know, thrilled to be here and be able to share some of my passion with you. So um, I'm going to get started painting. I want to tell you a little bit first about what inspires me. Thank you. Um, I believe in making art for joy's sake. It's a hashtag. I started it about five years ago. Um, and so what it's all about, making art for joy's sake, that's what fires me up. That's what makes me, thank you. Thank you so much, Malia, the great Malia. Sorry. <laughs> um, I get really fired up when I can teach others how to harness the joy that painting has to offer them specifically for me watercolor and that's what I teach so that's what I'm passionate about and we'll talk a little bit about, more about that today so um yeah so I'm gonna flip the camera around it may be a little crazy I have a little something set up here to maybe minimize the shake and everything as I get things set up but let's get started yeah that didn't work okay Let's just flip it around. All right. Bear with me, guys. Going for a ride. Okay. Now, for any of you who might be interested in um, painting along, don't feel like you have to. Most definitely, you can just hang out and watch. Um, but if you want to paint along, by all means, I welcome that for sure. But here's the thing. I don't want you to be like stressed out about like, oh my gosh, what kind of palette do I use? I, I don't have anything but my kids' Crayolas. Um, and I'm still adjusting here, guys. Sorry. Um, and you know what? I say fabulous. You, you need to use what you have, okay? We're not here to worry too much about... Um, you know, the exact materials that I'm using. You don't need to use exactly what I'm using. So, and you won't believe what I did, guys. I forgot to get water. So hold on a second. Talk, some, talk amongst yourselves. Okay, so I'm grabbing some water here. I am gonna show you the palette that I'm using and I'm gonna show you the brushes, but don't stress out about what you might wanna use. Here's my palette for today. This is the brush I'm gonna use. It's a dagger brush. I love the dagger. If, if any of you guys have watched me over the years, you know my obsession and it's a serious obsession with the dagger brush. <laughs> 
So there's that. Now I do have some just basic round brushes here that a lot of you might have and I will use those here and there. All right, can everybody see okay? Can I just get a couple thumbs up? Can you hear me okay? Oh, Maida, you got yourself a glass of wine, girl. You got, you know where it's at. Um, Just give me a thumbs up. Yes, you can hear me, you can see me. Nothing's terribly pixelated. Wonderful, okay. I also have paper towel. I use paper towels, I always have a paper towel, really important. Give you a peek at what we're working on. This is my best selling print on art.com. So that's what we decided we would uh, recreate today. So, do I have it upside down? Yes, I do. <laughs> so roses, cactus, we're gonna have lots of fun. Okay, let's get going. So there's a collection of techniques that I call WOWD. So W-O-W-D, a little acronym for you. And what that means is wet on wet, wet on dry. So WOWD, okay? So if you ever hear me say WOWD, you'll know what I'm talking about. So wet on wet is how we're going to start this painting. I'm gonna start down here with a few of, I'm just painting in with clean water, a few of the cactus pads. All right, and don't forget guys, I am taking questions throughout. I'm really good most days, most times, at balancing questions as I paint. So ask away, okay? Hey Virginia, thanks for hopping on. Now, I'm gonna grab a green. I'm not gonna tell you what green I'm grabbing. This is one of my pet peeves. A lot of painting videos out there are like, I'm grabbing my phthalo green and next my cadmium yellow light. No, mm -mm. no, 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 no. You grab whatever green you have and whatever green you like, okay? And now I'm painting it into the wet areas. Very simply, okay? So we started with clean water and then I'm grabbing a different green here and I'm just grabbing whatever green I have that I love the most and painting into those wet areas. Feel free to add a second color, okay? All right, first step, beautiful. At this point, feel free to add a third color. Thanks for the love, guys. Um, let's see, question, how do you come up with your compositions? Out of your head, photos, other? Great, great question. What kind of paper? Okay, so two questions. And guys, if I don't answer your questions, it just means they were scrolling by too quickly and I didn't see them, so just ask them again, okay? So composition, huge question. I often work from photos, um, unless I'm out and about traveling. <laughs> And so photos, don't be ashamed to use photo references. I love going on Instagram and I'll do like a hashtag search for like cactus blooms or whatever it may be that I'm looking to paint and use that because there you kind of have a built in composition, you know? Um, now this particular painting that we're working from, I did from live objects. Um, and it was kind of just a, a collection. I, I would see a cactus I liked here, and then maybe a few hours later, I'd see a bloom that I liked. So in that sense, you need to think about composition a little more because you're kind of making your own composition. And as I'm talking here, I'm still using the wet and wet technique um, and dotting in some more color. The question, is there a good place to order a watercolor starter kit for newbies? Yes. Art.com actually has an amazing kit. I am so blown over by it because it's really cool. It comes with um, a bunch of sheets of watercolor paper, comes with a frame that you can use. You can gift your painting afterwards and it comes with a set, a starter set of watercolor, watercolors. So check it out on art.com. Um, so back to composition and then I will talk about the paper. And as I'm doing that, I'm just dotting in another bit of green. I'm literally bouncing my brush up and down on the paper. I'm not scrubbing like this, okay? Not at all. Okay, so composition, think about it in terms of a focal point. So here it's gonna be the big rose that I'm about to start painting. And then having like odd numbers of things. So, you know, two, you know, one item, three items, five items, not even numbers. Odd numbers are visually more pleasing to the eye. So those are the very basics of composition, okay? Um, 
I'm using, the paper I'm using today is, uh, it's Legion Stonehenge uh, Cold Press. It's one of my favorites. How many colors can I mix? Oh, it's funny that you should ask. <laughs> I do not mix a lot of color directly onto my palette. It's just not something I do. I don't want people, again, to get tangled up in the whole idea of, oh my gosh, what color do I use? How do I mix it? I'm, I'm gonna screw this up. Worry, 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 worry. I don't want you to worry when you're painting. So you'll notice this is about the extent of my color mixing. I will put colors next to each other in wet areas on the page and let them mix themselves okay let's start the rose I'm gonna take a little bit of like a bright pink raspberry ish color I love to start with the center of my flower and guys remember if I missed your question ask it again I'm not ignoring you I promise <laughs> And I'm just making kind of squiggly, scratchy marks in a lazy circle. And what do I mean by a lazy circle? It's just a circle that isn't perfectly round. Uh, a little bit of a darker color, darker red from my palette. And I'm just dotting that in a little bit, okay? I'm rinsing my brush in between each time that I load up the color. That'll keep your color on the page clean. Now, let's start blocking in... The flower. What do I mean by blocking in? Just roughly putting in some marks. I'm using a peach, okay? If you don't have a peach, use a light pink. And I'm just making petal shapes, kind of fat petal shapes that don't really come to too much of a point, all right? Let me lift this up. These are all watercolors. I want to lift this up so you can really see it. Are the dots on wet paper too? This the the, um, the scratchy marks that I first put down were not. Thank you for catching that. These scratchy marks where I was doing this before were wet on dry. So wet brush full of color painted on dry paper. So thank you for catching that. I'm sorry that I didn't. Um, and then when I added in the darker raspberry dots, those were a little bit wet on wet because of the paint I had just laid down. So continue to add in these petal shapes. Orange plus magenta make peach. Thank you, Maida. And really rough. Okay, these are fat petals. Nothing perfect, nothing fancy. You're just blocking them in, roughing them in. Very light. And this is wet on dry. All these petals are wet on dry. All right. or your warm red, how would you, uh, let me see, how wet should you be keeping your paper and brush? Oh, such a good question. So I am, I'm kind of an overdoer when it comes to keeping your page wet. I like my page to be really wet. I like to see little puddles. See those little puddles? They almost look like they're gonna start to drip. That's kind of how wet I like things uh, because I like to be able to work into my page for a long time. I like my page to say to stay pretty wet. Yes, paint set, watercolor setup. I'm gonna actually slide it over here. So I have paper towel, my little brush stand, okay, and my palette. That's it, and a water container. Do do do. That's it. All right, so we've got the flower kind of roughed in. How's everybody doing? How many people do I paint with me? Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. All right, I'm gonna leave the flower alone. I'm gonna move on to some more cactus suggestions up here. Same thing. I'm gonna do two. We're gonna paint them in with clean water. Thumbs up, we've got painters, people. We've got painters, look at that, love it. And don't forget, you can check out uh, more versions of this pattern on art.com slash Christy and a bunch of others that are there as well. All right, nice and wet for the person who asked about how wet should we keep the page? It's pretty wet, see that? That's wet. You can go even more. Let's get wild, all right? 
Oh, yes, you can paint along, but you can watch too. It's totally up to you. I'm going to go a little more blue with this up here. So I'm just literally grabbing a blue and I'm dotting and lightly brushing it in. I'm going to grab a different blue. Thanks for all the love, guys. Love it, love it. Thank you. You, make a, you know how to make a girl feel loved. Um, and I'm just adding it into the wet. Perfect time to now go ahead and add in some other color, a little bit of green. I'm going to lift this up a little bit. I love this angle that I'm painting at, but you're getting a little bit of a glare. So yes, if you're just watching, I love it because it is incredibly relaxing. Yes, th this will be, um, we're recording this session. The question was, will we be able to watch this later and paint along? Absolutely. Um, there's going to be an option for that. Art.com is going to be saving this recording and posting it for people to watch later on, which is awesome. You can kind of see, and see it's running and like, I'm not panicking. Nope, 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 not panicking. So uh, this brings me to another one of my mantras. I talked a little bit about art for joy's sake. Another one of my mantras is uh, forget rules, forget right, remember joy, okay? Um, and it's a hashtag, so you <laughs> can search it. Forget rules, forget right, remember joy. And while I'm talking about that, I'm gonna be adding some unexpected pink and different things up in here. That is one of the things I'm known for is adding unexpected color, and it just really creates quite a pop. So forget rules, forget right, remember joy. What does it mean? It basically means you should know the rules. If you're starting out with watercolor, learn the rules, learn them. Learn how to paint according to the rules but then also know when it's time to break the rules. So, and the reason I believe this is because I feel like one of the biggest things that um, we fight against as, as artists or those of us who just want to learn how to paint for recreational purposes, we fight against motivation, right? Thank you so much, Esmeralda. Um, we fight against motivation and inspiration. We fight against distraction. So I want you to paint in a way all the time that makes you want to keep painting. Okay, does that make sense? I'll repeat it. I want you to paint in a way, rules or not, that inspires you to keep painting for as long as possible. So what that means, if the rules tell me that I shouldn't be adding this dark color right now because I should start light and layer up and layer and layer and layer to a darker color, but right now, I want to go dark. Right now, going dark right there is making me really happy and really excited about my painting. So guess what? I'm going to go dark, okay? So that's what I like to really, really emphasize is giving yourself that freedom to break the rules so that you stay happy. You stay happy in your seat, happy with your brush, happy with your painting, all right? Isn't that fun? Thank you. Yes, 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 no rules. Woohoo! Okay. So I, I always want to mention that. And I think that's too why I don't, you'll see it on YouTube. If you watch my tutorials on YouTube, I don't talk about color mixing recipes. I don't talk about the exact palettes I use all the time. It's just not something I want you to get hung up on, very simply. It's just not, okay? I went back down here to these pads added a little bit of clean water because I now want to go in and add some darkness in areas to get some more depth going, okay? This is called glazing. It's when you re-wet an area and add another layer of color, dimension, what have you. Go with the flow. Amen. All right. So I've got wet cactus elements here. I'm going to go back into my flower and start adding some dimension. I'm going to grab, grab whatever's on your palette. If it's a dark peach, it's a little bit of a raspberry color, similar to what you used in the center. And we're going to start making these little triangles in between the petals, wet on dry. And then we're going to take a little bit of clean water at the top of the triangle and blend out. See what's happening there? And now by doing that, I've defined, further defined these two petals by adding the little triangle and fading out here. And we're going to continue that. 
little triangle. These are misshapen triangles. They're not perfect triangles, okay? And blend. Blend, blend, blend. And there you go. And another one and blend. Do you ever use a fan to help force some of the drying? You know what? It's totally acceptable to do that. The question was, do you ever use like a hair dryer to force quicker drying time? It's totally acceptable. And sometimes I do, but it is not a go-to. I know you see it if you watch other people painting on uh, Instagram. A lot of people do it and it's in their time-lapse videos. It's just not something I do. And you want to know why? I find that it changes the texture of the surface of the paper. And I don't know if it's just me losing my mind and thinking that's what it is, but I just, I don't know. It just seems to change things a little bit too much for me. So, so I don't often do it. All right, so we're continuing to define those petals with our little misshapen triangles. All right, let's do a little bit of a light green center here. Just get that in really rough, really rough. And you can see that flower is starting to pop, right? Love it. All right. Keep those questions, guys. Keep them coming. I love it, love it, love it. I could talk forever, drive my family nuts, but mm-hmm. All right, down here, I'm gonna do, um, what do you wanna call it, a rose, a ranunculus? I'm gonna do a little fun pink flower down here. I'm gonna start wet on dry, okay? Right, it just, boom, it just pops. And it's a simple, simple technique. All right, we're gonna start at the center. Again, I love me some centers, all right? See what I did there? And we're gonna keep building little mountain here really pressing down on the brush and then slowly lifting up as I curve around I know I sound like I'm teaching kindergarten but seriously breaking this down easy uh no offense intended but breaking this down like this really helps another little mountain press down press down curve 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 lift up as you curve all right you don't ever want, when you're making um, heavily petaled flowers like roses, ranunculus, anything like that, you don't want to stack the petals right on top of each other. You want to stagger them like bricks, okay? You're not going to get that natural feel if you stack things right on top of one another. So you can already see that rose-like shape starting to happen. Remember, we're wet on dry, wet brush, wet paint, dry paper. I added a little bit of a different pink to my brush getting thicker with these shapes as I go out. All right. Feel free now, you have big wet areas. You can dab in some wet and wet with another color. Go for it. It's a great time composition wise. Make sure you're kind of taking the opportunity to connect one flower in the composition to another. Oh, ever add pen and ink? Oh, heck yes. I'll show you something really quick. Boom. Yes, I add pen and ink all the time. <laughs> pen and ink is a great thing to do if you feel like your painting is just meh and you're not loving it. It's a great way to transform a, you know, a so-so experience at your painting table into something pretty amazing, so by all means. And I just keep working my way around. I'm gonna stop with that one, I think. Curve it up here a little bit. All right. Take a little bit of a darker pink and go into areas just along edges. Add some definition, some darkness. Okay clean water on your brush can you slow it down can't keep up I will try sorry I'm getting excited so I added brighter color just along some of the edges and now I have a clean brush and I'm dabbing in some water blotting my brush on a paper towel and then scooping up to smooth out. 
All right. That is called, in my world, lifting. I'll do it again. I added the dark color right in here. Right, right, right. Thank you so much. I'm going to dab in some clean water, dry my brush on the paper towel, and scoop. That blends, that softens. So this lifting technique, you know, watercolor is a push and pull. I say it all the time, push and pull, push and pull. You're adding color to the page, but then you're constantly removing some measure of that color with different techniques. And that's how you get, you know, the different, um, you know, the different levels of depth and dimension. All right. Let's add in, I'm going to add in a red cactus up here, guys. I want you to pull your favorite green, wet on dry, and you're just going to make a circle, a really lazy circle. Remember, touch your other flower here. You have a perfect opportunity to further define that petal. Okay. Thank you. I'm glad you guys are having fun. Yay. Okay. Clean your brush. Grab the brightest red you have. This is another variety of cactus. These cactus flowers here, um, it's prickly pear. So these big cactus pads. This is another variety and I cannot remember the name of it and <coughs> I really should have looked it up and I didn't. But get some red in there. I did leave a little bit of a margin in places in that white, that white kind of ring. A little bit of margin. All right. Leave that alone. Let that dry a little bit, okay? Let's do some leaves, guys. <clears throat> Let's do some leaves. Leaves are my jam. Leaves are my safe space. Whenever I feel like I need something, you know, a little bit of inspiration, I paint leaves. So <clears throat> I grabbed a scrap, scrap, back of the scrap. So feel free to do that. Let's paint some leaves, okay? And then we'll go back to our painting for sure. Believe it or not, I'm going to do red leaves. I know, it's crazy. You don't have to do red leaves. I've got my dagger brush. And I'm going to show you with two different brushes because I know a lot of you probably have something that looks a lot like this, okay? So start with a lot of pressure. You're going to wiggle a little bit. And as you drag, lift up, twist your brush, let go, okay? And just keep doing that over and over again. You can double it to get different shapes. Add in some stems. All right, so this is a great exercise, something you wanna do afterwards before you, maybe you're gonna try, try this whole session afterwards. A great warm up is to fill a page with leaves. Try to see how many different shapes you can get, small leaves, short leaves, big leaves, fat leaves, whatever it is, okay? Oh, thanks. <laughs> My nails need to get redone. They're really bad, but thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, great exercise. Fill a page with leaves. Now I'm going to do a dot of dark green in each one. I know. Stay with me. Stay with me. I haven't lost my mind yet. I know it may appear that I have. Clean brush and start to blend that dark dot. By blending, you're just dotting. You're just making little dab, 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 dab. You can scoop and blot, lift out some of the color. Just blend, blend, blend. All right. Feel free to add, I <laughs> like toll painting, absolutely. Feel free to add other greens. All right, there's your leaf exercise. Awesome exercise. You can head to my YouTube channel and see I have a whole hour long video on creating variety of leaf shapes. Oh, I wanted to show you one more thing with one brush. Okay, let's do the same thing with the round brush for those of you who don't have the dagger. Yes, YouTube channel, just search Christy Rice YouTube. So literally Google Christy Rice YouTube and you will find me. 
If somebody knows the link and they want to pop it up for me, Maida, I know you know it. Um, that would be super awesome. So I'm doing the same leaves with the round brush. I can do it with one stroke. Okay. All right, let's go back and let's get some leaves in. I'm gonna put them right in here, kind of fanning out, thinking about my composition. Press down, lift up. Press down, lift up. Press down, remember this can be an opportunity to define that cactus pad a little bit. Go right up next to it. Press down, lift up. With the very tip of your brush, feel free to add in some stems. Okay, boom. Yes, we are saving the lives. Thank you, Maida. Thank you for um, popping up that um, my YouTube video. Let me see if I can pin that. I don't think it'll let me it's somebody else's link pin comment there we go I pinned it guys there's the YouTube channel all right maybe a few more leaves right here and then we'll go back and add in the dark green how's everybody doing those who are painting along those who aren't are you relaxed are you feeling inspired is there anything I can do to make you feel more relaxed and inspired that's what I'm here for you just let me know if something I'm doing is annoying, you can tell me. I've been known to be annoying. <laughs> Painting along. Yes, Michelle. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Again, the compositional angle of things. Three leaves. I've got four down here and I already don't like it. I'm going to do five. Odd numbers. Composition loves odd numbers. The eye loves odd numbers. All right. We're going to do a bud right down here in the corner. Similar technique to this, but I'm going to go with a light pink and I'm going to make a circle. Not a perfect circle, very lazy circle. All right. I'm going to take my favorite green tip of my brush and I'm just going to go right around the edge pushing down in some areas lifting up barely touching the paper in others I'm new to watercolors there are difference in the type of paper yes so um, I'm adding a little center here guys this was all wet on dry let's add some green leaves press down lift up stem press down lift up press down lift up Press down. Oop, I need more water on my brush. If you ever get a mark like that, guys, you need more water. That's all. Press down, lift up. Press down, lift up. All right. There's your bud. All right. Now, go back up here with a little bit of green. Dot in some accent, some depth into this red so we don't just have strange, random red leaves everywhere. Now this is technically what? Wet on wet. You got it. I wish to, I wish to have things for painting, but just do photography of a botanic, I think painting for relaxation. Yes. So go on to art.com and order the starter kit. If you don't have watercolors, I think it's $19 for the love. That is so affordable. And you'll have everything you need to kind of get things to get started. So um, it's a great time. It's a great time to, to kind of jump into something like this, for sure. Absolutely. Guys, don't forget to head over. Um, not now. You don't want to head over there now because you would miss the painting session. <laughs> but head over to art.com slash Christy and check out all of the prints that are available. Um, you're going to see some work over there. If you've been a follower of mine for a while, you, there's going to be some surprises there that you have never seen. So definitely fun to browse. Why can't I get deeper colors? Let me ask you, um, what brand of watercolor are you using? If you could let me know that, I might have an answer for you. 
I'm going to go back up into this flower. I'm going to keep working on that. I'm going to grab an even darker color, like a very, very dark blue mixed with a little bit of green. Okay, and we're going to continue to add little tiny triangles. Now, these triangles that I'm adding right now are even smaller. Okay, we don't want to, this is a dark, heavy color, so I don't want to go nuts. Learning so much, yay! Horizon, something, so like a kid's version. Okay, so... One thing you can do if you are using a kid set, uh, which again, there's no shame, no shame. Uh, wet each well of the watercolor, um, the little, you know, the little circle of watercolor, wet it with warm or hot water before you start. Um, when you're using, you know, beginner watercolor sets, the Crayola watercolor sets, um, the, just the pigment to filler ratio is not as high. So it's a little harder to get these intense colors. But if you activate the paint before you start painting, um, you will notice you'll get brighter tones out of it. So give that a whirl. And the other thing, if you're not getting bright colors with your set, but you feel like you should, just don't use as much water. Um, the water that you're using could be really toning down the color. You might just have too much water on your brush if you're at a stage in the painting where you're adding, you know, intense uh, shading, intense drama, you may not need all that water on your brush. All right, adding more of my little misshapen triangles to further define, and you'll start to see those petals pop. Now, another thing you can do is add in Mystery leaves, mystery greens, mystery reds. It doesn't have to be the perfect shaped leaf in areas, just a hint, just a dab of color. And then all of a sudden, everything around it starts to pop. That flower starts to pop even more because you're using those mystery green marks to define your foreground elements, meaning this flower right now. So add some mystery green marks, mystery mystery blue marks, and they're just going to read as leaves, okay? What's the hardest thing to paint with watercolor? <laughs> For me, I, you know, animals and people are just not my thing. I can do like fashion sketch type stuff, like nobody's business. Um, but realistic people for me is just like, boof. Um, when it comes to, you know, flowers obviously are like my thing. The hardest thing in terms of flowers for me is a white flower. Um, that takes just a lot of focus and a lot of pre-planning. Um, okay, back to the center of this flower. We're going to add three little like leaf-like shapes to define that center even more. All right. Rinse off your brush, grab a pink, and we're just going to wash a little bit of pink in areas, not completely covering up the white. Just a little bit of brightness, all right? <clears throat> yeah. Now, it's tricky here because this is wet. So as I'm painting over here, my hand could easily set down in this and then transfer. You don't want that to happen. So use your pinky to brace yourself so you hover just above the flower. I'm taking just a bright pink. Make sure your brush is wet enough, but not too wet. Using the very tip, start adding in some very thin lines. And this is all in the name of further defining your petals. All right, very thin. You're just, I like to call it a whisper. It's a whisper of a brush stroke right above the page. Barely touching. Thank you. Thank you guys. You guys are so sweet. Love you. All right. Oh, thank goodness you're relaxed. I'm relaxed. Uh, 
At this point, you can also add in some triangles, some more triangles that you blend out, all right? I wanna define that petal there a little bit more. Boom, there she is. Add some mystery marks over here because we need them to define these petals. Look at that, that flower is just boom, it's in your face. This is the moment. So let me talk a little bit about art for joy's sake because it's something that's really important to me, guys. And I just had a moment. I had my art for joy's sake moment and it happens every time I paint, pretty much every single time, okay? You know when you're doing something that you love, whether it's cooking, whether it's painting, whether, I don't know, whatever it is that you love to do, you know there's that moment where you look up and all of a sudden you realize that time had stopped. You forgot about all the worries of the day, the to-do list, the kids screaming in the background, and you're like, whoa, I was just doing this thing and the world just faded away. That's joy. That, that singular, beautiful moment when you realize you got lost in something, okay? And I just had mine. And the thing is, joy doesn't just last a moment, but it's when you realize that you're experiencing that joy, you were like, wow, that moment is so precious. So that's for me what painting is about. And that's why education like this is so important I'm going to start adding in some dots into the cactus here with a darker green not too dark though that's why education like this is so important because I want to teach you to find your, your joyful moment because here's the thing joy is not happiness happiness is not joy and I would much rather joy and let me tell you why I'm going to go down here and do the same happiness comes from Let's see, winning the lottery, getting a promotion, certainly getting out of quarantine. That would definitely cause some happiness. All right, safely getting out of quarantine. Okay. But I can't control those things. I can't control the circumstances that I know will bring me a glimmer of hap happiness. I can't. I can't control them. I'm fading out with a little bit of clean water, dabbing the water. Yes, we all need more joy. It's called flow. It's called flow. It has a name. Awesome. That joyful moment where the world fades away. That's your flow. All right. So happiness I can't control. Happiness I can't guarantee. But joy I can. Joy happens regardless of circumstance. All right. So joy or your flow. <laughs> I love that. Um, it happens. Something that you can own and that you can create. Isn't that like an exciting concept that you could literally harness this experience, this, this feeling, and you can use it and get it anytime you want, anytime you need. It's an escape. So for me, and what I'm doing here is a little bit of scrubbing. This is a really useful technique when you feel like you've made a quote mistake, clean water and scrub with a little pressure over an area, and then take a paper towel and blot and boom you've lightened that area so you know I can I can sit down with my paper my paints all that and I know that I'm gonna get I'm gonna be able to capture some moment of excitement some moment of joy I know that beyond a shadow of a doubt I own that it's mine so that's what I want to teach. I want to give you just enough skill, just enough knowledge so that you can harness that loss of time, that delicious loss of time any, anytime you want. That's why I'm here. I think that's why I exist in this world. So there you go. I'm just adding in some more of those little striation lines in the flower. Let's do another bud up here. And guys, we are coming up on the end. We've got about another 10 minutes. So get your questions in. Let's do another bud. So lazy pink circle. Wet on dry. 
you can certainly rewatch this. It's going to be uh, saved uh, beyond the 24 hours. So paper difference question. Thank you. I knew I missed something. Grabbing the green. Thicker in areas, thinner as I go around. And let's do some leaves. Not enough water. So different types of watercolor paper. Your two basic differences are hot press and cold press. I am using cold press. And what that means, if you can see it, I know, right? I don't want to go. But Instagram has a new thing. They kick you off after an hour. It sucks. Um, so you can see that texture there, right, guys? That is cold press. It's a textured paper. Hot press is smooth. So cold press is great for this loosey-goosey stuff like I'm doing here. Um, and then hot press is fantastic if you're doing a lot of fine detail. So for example, something like this. This is a piece I've been working on just privately. If you head over to Christy the Painter after this, you can see um, it, this still has a little texture to it, but it is more of a hot press, um, lots of detail. So hot press or smooth papers are great for lots of detail. There are extra rough papers. Um, there's rice paper. Um, so, <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, let's do a couple more leaves up here. I'm gonna go into the red family. And I'm telling you, the leaf exercise, leaf and stems, fill a page with leaf and stems. That will give you so much confidence because the leaf shape you're going to use again and again, even if it's not on leaves. OK, you're going to use that technique again and again and again. I'm going to go back into this flower with a brighter pink, deeper pink, and just add last bits of detail maybe a little bit of line quality in places okay what size artboard paper did you start with for this desert painting let me see i think it's a 10 by 13 10 by 14 10 by 14 yep Gonna smooth this out with clean water a little bit. I'm going to grab the darkest, darkest blue I have. I'm gonna load up my brush with not as much water as paint. Lots of paint on this brush. And let's go in here. And this is gonna give you the wow, the impact. Little bit of scratchiness in the middle here. See what I did there? Oh yeah. You wanna add a couple leaves in that dark, dark blue to further define then by all means, do it. These dark blue colors I use all the time at the end of a painting. They really, really help stuff pop. Mystery mark here. It's not really a leaf shape, but man, does it go the distance in defining that flower, right? Look at that. Ugh. So again, the darkest, darkest blue you have. I'm... Ooh. Hello, sorry about that. I'm using an indigo. How do you keep your paper from curling? It's a block, it's attached, see? They're all attached. So if you don't, if you're not using a block, I often use just individual papers. Um, just tape it down somehow to your surface and that'll keep things from um, curling while you're working. All right. Now, let's get into one of them, another one of my favorite parts, which is adding the, as my son calls them, the picky parts of the plant, <laughs> of, of the cactus. So use your green. I would go with a green. Again, load it up pretty heavily, but make sure there's enough water on there so you can get a nice thin line and unevenly space these little picky spines don't evenly put them all around the perimeter. This is such a fun freeing part. Make some of them longer, make some of them shorter. This really brings your cactus to life. I see those hearts flying. I know, this part is so exciting. I know, it's freaking amazing. Sorry, 
thin, thin lines. This is another exercise you can do, guys, is just fill a page or a half a page with thin, thin lines. How often do you finish a project in one sitting? I would say about half the time, honestly. Um, this style of painting is something I do often. Um, now, I could keep building and building and building the detail, um, but I'm probably not going to on this particular one. Um, so uh, let's keep putting these spines in. Um, I've been working on a couple of paintings recently, um, like the poppies I just showed you and a couple others that I have. Let me see if I can grab it quickly um, that have been a lot more detailed. And, you know, this has been hours and hours, multiple settings, lots of detail. So, um, but about half and half. I do something like this about half the time when I paint and then something, one setting like this the other half of the time. So, you're welcome. So, guys, I do have something fun that I need to announce um, our winner, the sweepstakes winner. I promised that I would announce that. Let me pull up the name. Are you ready? I, she's on here. I saw her. I hope she's still on here. I mean, she wins no matter what. Um, are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> okay. So our winner, the, the person who's winning all of the books and, um, a set, an art kit from art.com and, uh, a frame, all of it is going to our user named, let me find it, Chris Cross. Chris Cross, are you here? You are the winner. Everybody give it up for Chris Cross. We're pretty excited. <laughs> oh, I need to add a little bit of green up here. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you did. You won. She's here. I saw her earlier. I was like, oh, there she is. <laughs> Yay. All right. Couple of minutes, guys. So here's the thing. Don't forget to check out my YouTube channel. It's pinned here at the bottom. Don't forget to go to art.com slash Christy. Check out more of my artwork, stuff that you've never seen before. Congratulations, Criss Cross. Um, crisscrossart.com will be in touch with you shortly um, on how to get everything to you. So congrats, okay? Yay! <laughs> and here's the thing. You can find me on Instagram at Momental. It's the word moment with an A-L on the end. And then at Christy the Painter. Find me there. Ask me questions. I go live all the time painting. Find me, find me, find me. Let me be a resource, okay? Do I look at props to paint? I often look at photographs and in the, the uh, warmer months, I have live flowers in front of me. So guys, I don't want to get kicked off and lose this. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This has been a blast. If you want to see me on here again, let's just uh, let art.com know because uh, I would love to come here again. And it has been such a blast. Please reach out. The books, um, you can head to my Instagram accounts and there's links um, in my bio where you can purchase everything. Okay. Thanks so much, guys. Take care.